All right, we're going to talk about the Chart Your Course Mega Bundle on the Asset Store. It's now through the end of the month. We got three different bundles here, all the way from the uh, four at the top for 15 bucks, and then I think like five more for uh, 30, and then at the bottom the entire bundle for only 40 bucks. A whole lot of content, over um, over 90. 95% off or 90% off or something like that for all this amazing content. So we're going to go through and I'm going to let you know what I'm going to use in my project, my fantasy RPG. And go ahead and like and subscribe. Give a comment if you'd like me to do a deeper dive into any of the content in the Mega Bundle in an upcoming video. And that tells YouTube also that they should show this video to others. So let's get right into it. Alright, first up we have Umbra Boundary Builder which is a tool to make boundaries. And I know I'm used this style of boundary in my game, The Barbarian, and it took a few days to set it up over the course of all the different maps. And if this tool makes it easier to do exactly that, then I would say it's a real time saver, as the review says right there. Definitely something to consider if you're trying to do this type of thing in your game. It's only 15 bucks, and I think it's just a great addition to the bundle. Now we have the Runtime Transform Gizmos, and this one I'm not going to use for my game because my game doesn't have anything that could use this. However, I love this asset and I think it's really cool. During runtime, you can have your players move things around using gizmos that we use in Unity, which is really cool for level building and customization in a game that would make use of that. So while I won't be using it for my project, I do love the tech. And now Loading Screen Studio. This one's great. I haven't used this yet. I have another asset that is a loading screen asset. And I plan on using that for my game, but since I know I could code my own, um, but I've got the other one, so I'm using that. But this one looks really cool too. So I might give this one a try and just to see which one I like more. Might still code my own, but um, either way for $5, I don't know why it's so cheap. It shouldn't be that cheap. It's, it's something that just saves time. So, um, I don't see why why I wouldn't use it or anyone else wouldn't use it. Um, you can customize it, I'm imagining, so it, it looks pretty cool. And now we have the Swarm of Bats. Yes, I'm going to use this in my game. Uh, who doesn't need a Swarm of Bats, but certainly for the ambiance of a fantasy medieval sort of RPG, having a swarm of bats in the sky is great. It's a five buck asset, but hey, it's in the bundle and I'm gonna use it. Now Dungeon Maker. Now I'm not gonna use this in my game. Uh, I appreciate the asset and I have to say that maybe it would work really well with my dungeon asset, my dungeon package, so maybe one day we'll make a video showing how to use this with that. It looks to be like a tile layer or map maker where you can do randomization, and I will say I really like the attractiveness of the editor scripting itself. The publisher clearly put some thought into it. They have nice colors, a really nice design, and I definitely appreciate that. So maybe we'll use it in an upcoming video, but I won't be using this one for my game. Now we've got the Jujube Map Editor. Now this is another one that I won't be using for my project, but that makes sense. My project is not a blocky, block-based Minecraft style game. I do know though these uh, kind of games are very popular. My Nintendo Switch is constantly being used with games like this. So if this is your thing, this uh, map editor looks pretty cool, um, but I won't be using it in my game. Now the simple waypoint system is something that I will probably make use of long term I'm going to be having AI in my game driving the NPCs around but short term when I'm prototyping uh, having a simple waypoint system makes a lot of sense just to have movement in the game to get NPCs moving around before I actually sit down and code the AI system or use an AI system from the asset store and so this is something that I might not have bought for 15 bucks maybe it's not expensive but now that I have it, I'm almost certainly going to make use of it in the game just to get things moving, just to put out some some positions and get things moving on those lines um, or even the nav mesh, it looks like. So some of these might actually make it into the game in the final form. And then the Vertex or Vert Paint. Vert Paint is there's plenty of Vertex painters on the asset store. They all do the same thing, but some are better than others. I don't know what this one's like. I haven't used it yet. But if you haven't used Vertex Painting, definitely something to, to look into. 
Uh, as you can see on the right side of the screen here, they've got the shader with three different textures that they're blending onto each other using the vertex painting. So you can mix textures together and get a much more realistic and natural look out of your um, out of your environments. It's definitely something that you know all the big studios use, something that we should be using. And I'm actually surprised it's not kind of built into the editor already. But since it's not, we get to use vert paint and other assets like it. So I'm definitely going to be using this in my project. I actually already own Fog Volume 3, so I guess now I've got two seats of it. I'm definitely going to be using this in my game. Now I'm going to have a weather system that will probably handle the clouds and stuff, but for caves and dungeons and probably augmenting the environments themselves, the outdoor environments, Fog Volume 3, this volumetric fog, seems really powerful and really attractive, so I'm almost certainly going to make use of it in my game. Terra World uh, uh, Automated Level Designer is interesting. I've been watching this for a little bit, actually, so I was kind of pleased to see it in the bundle. Um, I like that you can take real-world locations and put those into your game, and to put them into your project, and you can then modify them and make them different, or you can make them as close to real life as possible. I love the potential for mixing in real world with the fantasy world and fake world and maybe even throwing in some real world caves or other things into this world so that if somebody playing your game knows that cave system, they might actually get like a, an upper hand versus other players. So I might use it in my project. And grab it. If you don't already own Grab It, what are you waiting for? This is the time to get it because Grab It is amazing. Now, I haven't used it in my um, environment packs yet, but I wish I had it when I was making my environment pack because placing objects by hand is not easy. Uh, any of us who have done it before, we know how tedious it is. Very annoying. The results are never as good as you want them to be. But with this, just using the you know in editor physics and gravity things just fall into place. So if you don't already have grab it, definitely grab it huh, from the Mega Bundle. Now we've got this imposter's runtime optimization. I've been seeing more of these on the asset store. I know Amplify Creations, the Amplify Shaders uh, folks have a, their own version as well. I know my game's going to be using some form of this. Probably I'll give this one a try since I now have it as part of the bundle. Um, but in a large environment, all the optimization you can get is helpful, so I'm going to give this a try and make sure my large environments are as optimized as possible. Advanced Terrain Grass. There's one video here that is really impressive. Here we go. Um, these two balls rolling down the hill, they actually knock down the grass, and then after a short while, the grass pops back up back to, to the way it was before. This is a really cool technique. I've seen other assets on the store that do the same thing, but I'm going to give this one a try for my game when I start building out the actual outdoor environments because that's the sort of immersion that I think a lot of players might not notice directly, but they'll, they'll get a better experience from the game having it there, even if they don't directly notice that this you know grass is reacting to the enemies or whatnot. Now, Mesh Deformation Full Collection, I'm not going to use it for what we're seeing right now. I'm not going to have my objects bouncing around. However, um, there are some things in here. There's a, a shot later in the video about denting a car, and then what we see right here with slight movements of the um, geometry of buildings, without, without doing too much, people don't really know a slight stretching, and you can get some more variety out of uh, buildings, which is really great for building you know, large, varied worlds. So when I get to the point where I'm making my towns and whatnot, I'm definitely going to be using this and also for that denting thing, just to get a more realistic look out of like battling and whatnot. Techni Tree Collider is definitely something I would suggest we all look into. Um, we all could do these colliders ourselves. We could probably use primitives to make these work, but really, um, Colliders are so important and for realism when it comes to like with this anvil here, you know, we got this fake side diagonal collider that if you, if you were to throw a projectile at it, it would bounce off the collider and it wouldn't actually hit the anvil. What we really want is for something to hit the anvil. Now in many games, maybe you don't need that level of detail on the colliders, but my project will. So I'm going to give this one a try and if it's easy enough to make uh, really awkward collider shapes, then that's going to save a ton of time. 
Full screen editor is an asset that I've seen on the store for a little while. Um, I haven't purchased it before, but now I'm probably going to give it a try and see how it works, especially for my demo videos I make for the Infinity PBR characters. I really like the idea of making those videos without the menu bar at the top. So even if I don't use it for my game, which I might, honestly, um, I'm almost certainly going to give it a try for my characters and my demo scenes just to get that menu bar out and give a more pleasing video experience when, when I put those up on YouTube. Asset Usage Finder is, I think, an asset that might be way more powerful than we realize. I mean, on the surface, it, it helps you find assets being used and find which objects are using specific assets, which is very convenient. But in a large project, especially when you've got a lot of assets from the asset store and your own assets, and it's been a while since you've touched a few things, being able to find where things are being used before you delete them will probably save tons of headaches and a ton of time. So I might put this in my project pretty soon just to get uh, best practices out of it. But in the end, I think this is the kind of thing that will help keep uh, projects less cluttered and more organized. Ucontext Pro is an interesting one. There, It looks like there's 40 tools for everyone in one asset. So what does that mean? 40 tools. Each one does something very specific, it looks like. I've gone through the list. I haven't read them all. I think this is like something we should actually do a video on where we actually go through every single one. Maybe I should interview the publisher and see what it is that this all these tools do. I almost am certain that there are tools in this which I will find valuable, whether it's these context menus or the drop down menus or some other tool that is in there. With 40 tools, there's got to be stuff that will save me some time. It's part of the bundle. Maybe I would have bought it otherwise, but since it's, I've got it now, I'm probably going to give it a try. Medieval Village Environment is one that, of course, I like. I have my own Medieval Village Environment. I love Medieval Village Environments. And while these are, of course, different packages, not mine, this is another publisher's package, I love the idea in a game of having varied geometry and architecture. Because in a real-world setting, you go to a different town, and they might not have the same architecture as every other town. And so the idea of mixing and matching different art packs in one project makes a lot of sense to me. It's something that I'm very much okay with. And so I will probably give this a try in my project and see how these uh, work with my own. And if they match enough, I'll definitely be using this in the game, in the final game, actually. Sci-fi effects from Forge 3D is not, I'm not going to use all of it. These uh, turrets, I definitely don't need. That's not part of my game but the stuff that comes out of these turrets are certainly something i could use this is going to be like magic spells rather than lasers but these little laser beams and particle effects are going to be super valuable so i'll use those task atlas is another asset that i haven't purchased yet but i'm so glad i have it now before whenever i was making you know you're going through a scene and you're uh, finding all these small projects or problems that you need to fix I used to write them down in a notebook, write down where my player position was, the rotation was, what the issue was, so that later I could stop the, the game and fix all those small things. Now you can actually add little sticky notes to your project itself as you're playing it. So when you come out of play mode, you can go back into there and actually modify and fix the things you need to fix without having to use a notebook next to your desk. Now Dream OS, this one is really cool. I'm not going to use it because my game is a fantasy medieval style RPG. But if I was making a sci-fi game or a realistic world game, this is really cool. I really want to make an Inception style project where you've got games inside the computer that, you know, so it's like a computer game inside a computer game. It, really cool stuff like that. I'm really impressed by this asset. Uh, I think it's really really neat and I, I i would love to use it one day now we got the mantis lod editor and i can tell you from experience this one's great this is the editor we've been or the lod um, editor we've been using for all of our characters in the past and that's specifically because one there was a free version and two uh they retain blend shapes and for the infinity pbr models 
it's extremely important to retain the blend shapes, not just for the animated blend shapes, a lot of our animations use blend shapes for the more realistic animations, but also for the mesh morphing. All of our mesh morphing is, uh, uses non-animated blend shape values, and a lot of the LOD um, creation tools out there actually strip blend shapes from the final product, which means you wouldn't be able to get those animations, and you wouldn't be able to get that mesh morphing. LODs are something that's very specific to your project. That's why I always tell people to get Mantis. That's why I told people before. Now I'm telling people, get Mantis as part of this bundle because you'll save money and you'll get all the other assets as well. But for your project, this will make you the LODs you need. Now we got Tile World Creator. I love the publisher, Door44. I know they make their own games as well. I wouldn't be surprised if this asset actually was a tool they used for their own games and decided to put it on the store. So I totally appreciate that they publish and make games. I'm not going to use this for my project, but for any project that needs this kind of map, this kind of level built out with just basically tiles on various levels, I can see like uh, uh, Starcraft and other levels like that. This seems like a really easy way to not only get uh, customized levels, but also randomized levels. So definitely if this is your type of game, then I would suggest giving this one a try. Um, it might save you days and days and days of time. So there we go. That's the Mega Bundle right now. There's a lot in this bundle. Uh, 40 bucks gets you everything from the first tier. Those four packages, there's three in there that I'm going to be using. From the second tier, there's uh, three or four that I'm also going to be using. There's just so much stuff. Even though like a $5 asset, $10 asset, they add up to where you're saving, even if you only want half of the stuff, you're still saving like, I don't know, tons of money. Like, I, I can't even do the math in my head. That's how much money you're going to be saving. But I think it's like 90 or 95% savings. In this third tier, like, come on, if you need any of those expensive assets, then you're getting a discount and all the other assets for free. Honestly, if you're watching this video, I'm surprised you haven't already bought the bundle. But if you haven't, give it a try. Maybe it's not your thing, but I have a feeling that there's going to be stuff in here that will save you time and save you money in the long run. So there you go. Uh, check it out. Let me know in the comments what you like from this. And let me know if there's anything from this bundle you'd like us to make a specific video about. So we can do a deep dive into how the asset works and how we're going to use it in my RPG as well. Thanks very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell YouTube to show this to more people. Thanks.